In this video, we're going to take a look at working with the OSL textures just to get you up and running. And for this video, I'm using the Machinery 01.C4D scene. So I'm going to graph the uh, floor material. That's the material that's applied to this plane right here. And I'm going to create an OSL texture and hook it up to the diffuse input. So far, we don't see a whole lot of change. So OSL stands for Open Shader Language. It was created by Sony and released to the community. So it's now kind of an open source thing. It allows you to code textures uh, and other nodes uh, using the Open Shader Language. If you're not up on that language, you can actually find scripts online that can be plugged into the code section of the node. So if I have this the uh, OSL texture selected here, you can see there's this editor area where you can plug in the code. And so if you go to the website, uh, docs.otoy.com slash OSL, there is a whole OSL guide here that will take you through the basics of working with open shader language in Octane. And it includes some uh, scripts that you can copy and paste. So let's copy this script right here. And this is a script that creates a Mandelbrot texture, like what you see down here. So I'm going to press Control C with that selected, and Control V to paste it in here. I have auto on, so it will actually compile automatically. And I'm going to restart the render here. You can see that the surface turns white, and that is because the texture is very, very large can see that there are some extra attributes that have been added down here. These attributes have been created ba based on the script here. So uh, one thing we can do is I'm going to add a, um, an input, a projection input here. So I'm going to create a UVW uh, texture, transform texture right here. And let's plug it into project. If it's being stubborn, let's get rid of that. Let's select this. Go down here and click on this arrow next to project. Choose from C4D Octane. And I'll choose UVW Transform this way. That seems to work a little bit better. And then with this selected, I can choose Transform. And let's just set the scale down here fairly low. It just takes a little bit of messing around to get it to update correctly. Let's try re-updating it. And I'm going to try reset and compile. There we go. Now we're starting to see the pattern. You can see when I hit reset and compile, it kind of readjusted these numbers down here. So I'm going to set this to say 50. And you can see we get this kind of banding around here and low level of detail. I'm going to set the max count to, let's say 500. Now you can see we're getting a lot more detail in the Mandelbrot texture, a kind of typical infinitely repeating fractal texture. Um, so these, as I mentioned before, these attributes down here were created as part of this particular script. So you can go online into the uh, CG community and look for OSL scripts that you can then plug into the texture here to get various different types of effects. Not every OSL script is compatible with Octane, so some may have some attributes that can cause Octane to uh, crash. So be careful in the scripts that you use. Usually if you start looking around within the Octane community, you'll probably find some really good stuff that is safe to use with Octane. Uh, but this is something that's definitely being developed, so we'll see further um, improvements in the future.